Hello and welcome to the weekly review, a program of Sawa Sawa Network, making sense of relevant topics and news. My name is Roger Alfred Yoron Modi, I'm the producer and the host. Uh, joining us today uh, from Juba via Zoom is Dr. Lual Achuegdeng, the managing director and founder of uh, Ebony Center for Strategic Studies. He's an economist, politician and author. He's also the coordinator of the Secretariat to the Leadership of the Ongoing National Dialogue Steering Committee. The weekly review shall today be looking uh, more broadly into the ongoing national dialogue uh, initiated by President Salva Kiir since uh, late 2016, and more specifically into the National uh, Dialogue Conference um, that kicked off in Juba last week and is expected to conclude uh, this week. Uh, we shall also look uh, into the, uh, uh, the latest book by Dr. Lual uh, titled uh, The National Dialogue, a framework for sustainable peace, economic growth, and uh, poverty eradication in South Sudan. Welcome to uh, the program, uh, Dr. Lual. Thank you, Rayar, and thank you for giving me this opportunity and uh, a greeting to your audience. Uh, let's start with the ongoing two weeks national dialogue conference that started uh, last week in Juba. Our audience would like to know uh, what it is uh, and how, how, how is it going so far? Just in brief. So far, so good. Uh, people are speaking, uh, delegates are discussing the resolutions and views of the grassroots consultation, which came through the regional conferences, the three regional conferences of Greater Equatoria, Greater Barazal, Greater Panay. And we have so far, uh, com uh, so let me back up a bit. So four themes emerge from the grassroots consultation. They were in the area of, on the question of what, what went wrong. So views have been classified to, to four clusters. The first is governance mm -hmm. and what went wrong you know, on the side of the, the crisis of leadership and governance. And that has been the main now resolution whereby resolution on adopt a federal system that has been unanimity now. Also, there has been a decision under the governance to go for two term limits of five years each. And then the, the land issue, which also come under the economic, but it came under the governance cluster, the, 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 the delegates, the conference, national conference has adopted that the land belong to the communities. The regional conferences, there were differences. Two regions supported land belong to the communities. One region said land belong to the government. And so those are the things which have been resolved. The, the second is security sector reform. And they were, they were those based on the grassroots consultation about their views about the, the, uh, the, the, the security sector, where many people felt that the security sector, whether it is the army, whether it is the police, whether it is the national security, intelligence, uh, they do not represent, they, they don't reflect the faces of South Sudan. Mm -hmm. So some of the issues, the federal system will resolve the issues of police and others because the police will be recruited locally at the state level. And the reform was presented by able commanders from the SP, SPLA and people were very happy with their presentation. So also there they have also gone for the need for the army to reflect uh, the faces of South Sudan. And also for the army, they have shown that the army, army is underpaid army and that's why they are cutting down forest that's why they are doing all kinds of things because they have nothing so the issue has been addressed under the the economy so the, you have now the governance the security and then the government and and then the economy and under the economy issues of corruption issues of physical and monetary policy the exchange rate the question of crisis uh, prices uh, going up 
and also that the, the economy is dominated by foreigners. And also foreigners in, in collaboration with uh, political politicians and generals. And they are the one controlling and that's why the economy is not going well. So the resolution there to make sure that the, uh, the government pays salaries on time and so forth. And today they will be discussing the first one, which is social cohesion. And, uh, and, and so the resolution of social cohesion is the issue of a question of tribalism and uh, its initiatives. And it's not the communities, but the grassroots sake is a politician when they agree in Yubo, they rush back to their communities, mobilize them, use them to fight among themselves. So they will be addressed today. What, what, and then subsequently after this, mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. Uh, what is the roadmap? Like uh, what's going to be done with those resolutions once they're, they're, they're done, once they're concluded? Well, the, each, each day the resolutions are made. So they will now be compiled to, to one single resolutions. There are things coming up, uh, which will be discussed. We do not know what the delegates will say because there are issues on foreign policy. There are issues also a call up an appeal for election because then the, the steering committee felt that elections, if it is run by the government, then they will fight. Mm -hmm. Because the, you know the government, the way it is, comes five vice president from different parties. Mm -hmm. So what uh, the document, if it is approved by the national conference, it appeals to the African Union, not even IGAD, African Union and UN to be the one to conduct election so that there's is managed by them by a, a neutral body so that nobody will refuse and you can see now what is happening in the u.s mm -hmm. from refusing that day. so the steering committee in my view was ahead of time and they, they saw what would be coming and after all these things they will now be presented to the president because the president is the one who initiated and by the way he's coming you said it is this week they know the conference is not ending this week mm -hmm. running uh, it's not ending on Saturday. It will uh, definitely either Monday or Tuesday next week. Oh. And the president will come and close the, the conference, will come and address himself. Uh, he sent his, one of his vice president at the opening, but now this is now coming to, 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 to address, uh, to, to close it. Well, um, before we could look into a specific uh, contributions to the process, both uh, as an individual and the coordinator to, of the Secretariat to the leadership of the National Dialogue Steering Committee. Uh, tell us, uh, tell our audience briefly uh, and, and more broadly about your latest book, The National Dialogue, uh, a framework uh, for sustainable peace, economic growth, and uh, poverty eradication in South Sudan. In brief, what, what, what's included in the book uh, and what does the book uh, you know, seeks to achieve? The book is uh, to is really to, uh, an attempt to to enable South Sudanese or anybody else to find the key messages of the national dialogue process because there are so many documents. Mm -hmm. the, you have fifteen reports of the subcommittees, and then there are so there are various technical notes for each subject. Then you have now the speeches and all this, that the, and there was a series of discussion, debate within the student committee. The student committee is a convener. You know, a convener can be one, it can be many. So all those views and what emerge, I felt it's uh, obligated that I put them in one book so that one can read and find exactly what went, what was, what, what is the process of national dialogue? What it was meant for and what has it achieved? And then focus specifically on, in my area, on the economy, but it's still talk of, if you address, if these things are addressed, then the national dialogue would have actually contributed towards sustainable peace in South Sudan and also economic growth. So sustainable peace in the sense of, you address the issues of governance, the issues of federal system, if it is addressed, and the issues of uh, of corruption, 
uh, because this is what makes people angry when they feel aggrieved uh, and so forth. So that uh, the national dialogue is whatever we are discussing in the area which will contribute towards peace. The second is economic growth. And actually, if there is no peace, peace, economy cannot grow. So peace is a necessary and sufficient condition for an economy to grow. Uh, how many chapters are there in the book? There are 10 chapters. Okay. Um, there are ten chapters, but uh, then they are grouped into mm. yeah, there are, are three parts. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there are, you you have three parts, uh, whereby you you have part one is basically a background. Mm. Yeah, which is uh, bringing peace to South Sudan. That's part one, and it consists of two chapters. Yeah, the, the imperative, chapter two is the imperative of sustainable peace in South Sudan. And chapter three, the structure and process of the national dialogue. And then you have part two, which is the economy. It has four chapters. Chapter four, leveraging peace. So and then they say the economy. So with the peace, now the economy can begin to grow. So we put what, what, what and then chapter five, mm -hmm. first ways the economic growth. Mm -hmm. And then we talk about what are the, look at the literature, what does the economic theory say? And then in practice, what are the conditions for economy to grow? So I have identified, for instance, leadership mm -hmm. is one of factors which allow the economy to grow. You don't yeah. have a visionary. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, now you can uh, go go on uh, and uh, tell us more and yet brief about your your contribution to the dialogue. Your 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 major ideas uh, for the success of the process. The basic idea is to get back to, um, you, you know, I'm. A, Mm -hmm. uh, people can say associate of John Garang, whatever. I always say I'm a student of John Garang. Okay. Yeah, so we have to go back to the basic. Mm -hmm. The idea of John Garang was it was going to be a payback time. Mm -hmm. And instead of doing that, we at least we paid ourselves. Mm -hmm. And you have seen what has happened. So that was not the payback time John Garang wanted. So we have deviated from that one. The second idea of John Garang was take towns, the people in our rural areas. So basically, it was not to go, uh, was the idea was not to destroy Jupo and take building to, it was basically provide services to the people in the rural areas and let them grow those rural areas, they can grow, you see, so they don't need to come to Juba. Why do they come to Juba? Look for health services, look for schools, look for water, look for electricity. You can take those things to them. And among the first thing we did was the telecom. And by the way, some of our people were refusing. I happened to be, when I was in Khartoum at the time, State Minister of Finance, I pushed the people in the, the in the in, in Juba, they were refusing network to take towers to villages. And some of the ministers were refusing, they didn't want. They say it is going to bring uh, allow the North to spy on us, which is nonsense. And when we brought to the attention of the President Selfa, Biden who was the first vice president, he was very angry. He said, Who is saying that? Please. And he went to Khartoum and order. They were, telecom companies to take to every payam, if possible, a tower. So at least start with counties, put tower to enable the communication. So that is the meaning of, so a tower is a good example, then you create a, a community centers where people sit in, you have a healthcare unit, you have a school, you have a police station and all those kinds of things. So the moment you have those, 
then the cities, the services will turn, will start again around them. The third idea, which is mainly in the focus of the, of the book, mm -hmm. is making agriculture the engine of growth of our economy and use oil revenues to fuel this engine. And it is doable. So it's one of the payback, sustainable livelihood. You have our population, especially the young people, especially the uneducated one. You have heard of what they call the white army, the Gilwing, Matiang Anyor, and all those things. Those are idle use. We have to engage them so that they have sustainable livelihood. And where do you engage them? In agriculture, crop and livestock. And if you focus there, this country will be able to produce more than what it consumes and export the rest. So agriculture at this stage of development is the engine of growth, not the oil production. And we have relied too much on oil, but we have not even made use of those. Only a few of us we have used, not even properly. Maybe we have taken some money out to Nairobi, Kenya, other places, but it's not sufficient. And that could be used. And you have seen now oil is depletable uh, uh, resource. So those are the ideas in the book, but key again, question of management, public financial management. Okay. You have those things. And, uh, you can manage them well. On agriculture, you know, yeah. you require uh, the issue of insecurity addressed. So uh, how, how did you handle that uh, in the book? Uh, the issue of but this is what we have said the security sector have already identified. So you address the security sector mm -hmm. concern. So, mm -hmm. and the federal system will already take care of because the moment mm -hmm. you have the police coming from the states, mm -hmm. you can't transfer them. You don't transfer. Mm -hmm. They come from the states. So mm -hmm. they will not, they will resolve the issues at the city level, at the, at the, at the state, county, and Bayang level. So, but we will say, if you don't have this security, if you don't have peace, mm -hmm. then you will not have the agriculture that cannot grow. Because the, most of, as I said, those young people and they get it, they are being used by the angry politician mm -hmm. to achieve their political objectives. But if they provide alternative, because they don't have alternative plan the hood, mm -hmm. then they will be they, they, they would be used by others. How about uh, national reconciliation and healing? Uh, is it something you also... Uh... I, 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 I did not dwell too much on it. I hinted to that that you need a healing. Mm. And that's if you implement chapter five of the agreement. And um, <clears throat> you were mentioning some other points uh, before I interrupted. Uh, Esa, we are almost winding up, so you could add to that, and then I ask you my last question. Yeah, but then um, where I've, I accept the, 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 the agreement, the peace agreement to be, mm -hmm. is not 100% perfect, but it's something we have. Because our people have spoken, there have been a national conversation, and the elites have spoken through the peace agreement and you have the collegial presidency. So my idea is expand the collegial presidency. From today, there are six, there are five vice president and the president six. So I'm saying make them nine, bring in so, Soma, the, the group of uh, those of uh, Thomas Cirillo, Paul Malung and Pagana Amun. Give them three seats in the presidency. You don't need to expand. You can expand the president, you don't expand the ministries. So you have now three. I mean, you will have nine, but I'm saying that in the because this is leadership now. If you have if you if the presidency, which is called collegial presidency, if it doesn't work like collegial presidency then the leadership will be missing. And it's one of the fundamental requirements of economic growth and peace. So these nine, I'm recommending they must have at least one woman 
uh, three women, so one from each region. So I say nine must be divided by three using Joseph Lago formula in 1972. You know, when the Anyanya came, SARS was given 6,000 to be observed in the Sudanese army. Equatorians were more because war was being fought in Equatoria. Equatorians were more than the Anyanya forces. And Joseph Lago said, no way. It has to be two, that you divide six by three. So 2,000 from each. So more of the Equatorian, they were left out. Upper Nile they started to recruit. Knew they were not in their Anyanya. The same thing to Baragazia. So you make now the three each, region bring three. And then of those three, one must be women. So Upper Nile, take Upper Nile for instance. Upper Nile has already a woman, okay? Madame Rebecca. Upper Nile has reached its quota in the presidency because you have Dr. Riek, you have Taban, uh, Jonathan Taban Denga, you have Madame Rebecca. Uh, Bar Hazal has reached two, they only need one. You have the president and you have Hussein Abdel Baghi. So they need a woman there. Equatoria has only one, uh, Dr. James Wan Iga. So they need two, of which one must be a woman. And then, so you have now represent, regional representation, okay? There are some people, of course, not happy. They say, oh, this sectarianism, but you have to address, what do you have? It's a, region, it's a reality. We want the country to be stable. How about the transition? The transition, like to, to how long, for how long? For how long? Be patient. Be patient. I'm coming. So I said, as of July next year, we go for six years, but also rotational. So as of July 2021, President Selfa continues to be the president for two years. Okay. After that, the next come from Upper Nile. Riek Machar become the president. Selfa, if he wants, President Selfa, he wants to stay, he will not be a president, he will be. And I, 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 I suppose he, he will have to leave anyway, because he would have already reached enough. That's a 21, so he will have about uh, uh, 16 years in government as a leader of the South from 2005. It's more than enough. And then you now have the, 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 the Upper Nile, say Dr. Riek, for instance, become the president after two years from next year. And then the first vice president become from Equatoria. We take now one. He goes for two years as a president. Then the last two years of the six years, Waniga or any person chosen by Equatoria to be the president. And then Baraza become first vice president and those things so. So, so but they have to work in the collegiality, collegial presidency as a team, so as brothers and sisters. It, it's not the region, it's the parties. parties. But the parties are compelled mm -hmm. to make sure that, because it is the same ruling party, the majority, the parties are compelled to bring from the region. So, it, so, it, so it's not the region per se, it's not the political parties are compelled to bring. So in that way, you, 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 they, then you will now compel you will not have, if you make the region, then you will have regional political parties, which I don't want. Mm -hmm. So you compel the political parties now. So they have to be present in all the, the, the three regions. That's and there's actually a requirement in the, in the election law. I think you have to have some minimum number of uh, registered uh, members in order for you to be, and you have to have more than two thirds, I believe, or is it? 50% plus one of the 10 part of the 10 states. So a political party must be present in at least six states for you to be registered. Well, uh, Dr. Luwal, we are almost uh, uh, to the end of the program. My final question to you uh, is that uh, is around the, the critics of the national dialogue. Uh, you see, we have parties to the conflict, uh, parties to the revitalized agreement and some other members of the public uh, who uh, complain about the dialogue that it is uh, uh, good but at a wrong time and uh, the procedure is also uh, is in conflict with the revitalized agreement 
and uh, all those concerns uh, i'm not getting into the technicalities but uh, despite that the president and uh, other people may be having good intentions uh, for the dialogue uh, don't you uh, as uh, someone who is uh, prominent in this process uh, feel concerned that uh, those who are complaining should be listened to yes i i like the your last part listen to so listen to is is actually the uh, is the key in the dialogue take for instance okay first of all yes i'm i'm concerned that people this is the first national conversation and it's from the grassroots we have covered all the counties of south sudan with the exception of two akobo and part of Raja. And we reach out to Dr. Yek that we would like the national dialogue to be conducted through the church in your area, the areas you control. He initially accepted, later on he refused to allow. So we said, okay, only two if you have, you have uh, 79 counties they were before the independence you have 79 and the other one recognized leave the what we have done later on plus bi now so it says just for the sake of say 80 so question of linking out of bi because we still have problem with the sudan so out of 80 you have one and a half counties you have not covered mm. what else can you do so for me, it's not 100% perfect, but it is 99 point something nearer there. We would have liked to, so that's number one. Number two, those voices be listened to, they don't need to be physically present in the Freedom Hall in Juba. You know, the refugees are now participating because of the corona. They were going to be brought under protection and they were going to go back and government agreed at the time they give them the let, let the UN bring them, let them stay in the IDP or whatever under protection of the UN and they go back to participate. Now because of the coronavirus, they are using this um, um, uh, medium which are, you are using the Zoom and video conferencing. So they are participating from the refugees camp facilitated by UNHCR. And then also the IDPs, they are participating in the conference through the Zoom. So we have covered it. There are politicians who have been refusing. Dr. Lemakol, I thank him because he made a release. He called fallacy of national dialogue, something like that. And where he's attacking national dialogue is his view. So yesterday, this document was taken, tabled by Honorable Angela Veda, and they said this is what one of our leaders has said, and the delegate said, no, let us adopt it because we have to listen to it. So his, his statement is now part of the National Dialogue Archives. It will be documentation. But doesn't mean that his view will be accepted. They say, no, what he's saying is not correct. He's one of the leaders causing problems in the country. That's his view, what he was said. Yeah, you, you say National Dialogue is irrelevant. You are the one who is irrelevant because you are alone but we'll take your views and your document will be here. Uh, it will be kept for future generation to judge later on. So we have listened to, meaning, it, uh, and you are a good journalist when you use the word listen to. When you listen to something, it doesn't necessarily mean you are going to accept it. So Dr. Lam has been accorded even here. He has, I, I've seen, uh, I've not yet read it. He has responded to the, to the decision of the, of the national dialogue to, uh, so in that way, it is a dialogue. He will continue, but he's making a mistake for, for him to continue attacking. But the, the National Dialogue delegates, this document will also be circulated and will be put as, is, that is a dialogue. So without knowing himself, he's dialoguing <laughs> with, with us. Yeah. Uh, just brief, very brief. How about harmonizing the process? Because the revitalized agreement has, has a lot of processes there that are well defined, including the making of the permanent constitution. Uh, is the national dialogue uh, in any way uh, not trying to 
um, uh, repeal the agreement. There's a, we are using the word synergy. Okay. Last time, Dr. Rick said, no, don't use the word synergy, use symbiotic, symbiotic relationship. We say, okay, whatever. But we cannot say, this is, you know, let me emphasize it. National dialogue process is a grassroots, bottom up. The peace agreement is top down, so no contradiction. And we have said there's a synergy between the national dialogue and the peace agreement. They don't contradict themselves. They are complementary to each other. There are areas where we, were, we might not have addressed, but they are addressed, like issue healing will be addressed tomorrow, it is being addressed today. So ours is a comprehensive but general. Now, people are saying, but there's a document on, uh, on constitutional draft. It was based on the 15 reports, just like uh, what I did in my book, so some lawyers sat down and look at what people have said. And they say, this could be a model constitution for South Sudan. It's just a view. So it is not saying that national dialogue is putting the constitution, no. It is a group of lawyers, they are not South Sudanese. And they sat down and they felt, oh my God, you guys, what you have done, it can be turned and this is how it should be. So. It, be, it is up to, of course, there's a call in the agreement for the constitutional conference. Yeah, constitutional conference will be based on documents, including the peace agreement, including what the national dialogue is. is, is. Now, now, after this uh, conference that is ongoing, the regional conference, like, wh when is the dialogue expected to conclude? Like, because it has been going since 2016. It will conclude, and document will be presented, and the implementation mechanism. I thought you were going to ask that, you didn't ask how this is going to be implemented. There's a, me a mechanism proposed to follow up and monitor implement. So like before that, but is this yeah. the end? Is this the end of the process? Because from the beginning, this, since the, end, the, end. this is the end of the, con okay. So from there, you, the it, to, it's going to be about implementation mechanisms. Just implementation mechanism, uh, we will see what will happen and then the implementation mechanism is pushed in such a way it will be uh, there's a council i believe will be shared by the president jubitized by his first vice president but that process has go, go to to parliament then there will be other bodies research institution centers like ours civil society and all they, they will monitor from their own centers and it's not just the government because they're also political parties they have to implement there are a number of things that the political parties have to do okay with that uh thank you very much for being on the program okay welcome take care bye-bye bye, -bye. Bye.